We have this wonderful thing called sex. We make more humans with it. Sometimes we use it as a weapon of war. It is a powerful thing. We are wired for pleasure, of which sex is one of the most intense. We focus a lot on sex, even though it actually makes up only a very tiny percentage of our lives. And unfortunately, it often doesn't work so well for us in today's world. Overall, rates of sexual dysfunction for men is about 30 to 40 percent, and is more common with older age. Women experience sexual dysfunction as much or a bit more than men. 40 percent have concerns, and 12 percent have really distressing sexual problems. The tabloids at the checkout stands always seem to have sex help cover stories. Sex sells, including sex problems or how to have better sex. It is very much on people's minds. To get the scope of sexual problems, here's the basic breakdown. For men, low libido, low sex drive, is about 5 to 15% of men, increasing with age. Erectile dysfunction, or ED, ranges anywhere from 8 to 37%, increasing with age. It is the most common sexual dysfunction. Across countries, about 8% of 20 to 30-year-old men and 37% of 70 to 75-year-old men have erectile dysfunction, averaging about 16% overall. Premature ejaculation, about 4% by strict definition, but up to about 30% complain of ejaculating too soon. For women, the picture's a little bit different. Lack of sexual desire is about 39%. Impaired arousal, about 26%. Inability to achieve orgasm, 21%. But only for about 20 to 30% of these last two conditions does it actually cause distress for women. About 14 to 16% of women overall have pain with sexual activity. And in postmenopausal women, about 40% find sex uncomfortable. As we get into sexual dysfunctions and the lifestyle remedies, it is important to understand how common these issues are. That you're not abnormal, you're not alone. It is important to understand that there is a big difference between things not working as well as we would like, or mild and occasional problems, and more serious sexual problems. Of course, we all want great sex, and that's a very good thing. To understand sexual problems, we really must be clear on what is healthy and what we are designed for. Sex is fundamentally about procreation or reproduction. We will assume you know about the birds and the bees. Boy parts and girl parts get together, have a great time, polywogs called sperm, go and find the egg up inside the woman, and a new human being is started. The more those two people are able to keep having such wonderful experiences and remain together in a healthy, stable relationship, the more successful they are likely to be in raising healthy children for the next generation. Good sexual function is directly proportional to good relationships and situations. We need to understand the primary systems involved in sexual function so we understand why sex does or doesn't work well. The two big systems at play are the brain and the vascular system. It is kind of like NASA. The brain is command and control, headquarters, and the vascular system is what operates the rocket on the launch pad. Other systems are important too, but often play lesser roles. Nerves carrying signals, hormones that support sexual function, and so forth. If nature gets what it wants, these systems work very well. We are going to share with you how to use lifestyle as medicine by identifying and addressing the vast majority of the causes of sexual dysfunctions.